Where do you go when you're having a bad day? For me, I go to Jack's Lake and I hang out with the animals. I never know which one of my friends will show up, whether it's the otter, the crane, or the beaver. But I know that I'll always have a great time enjoying the views. I hope that you enjoyed the first episode where we looked at Willow's Creek. In this episode, we're going to take a look at Jack's Lake. In this episode, we're going to see a lot of animals. Birds. So many different species of birds. Ones that I don't even really know the name of. I hope that you can help me out. We'll see some beavers, otters, and even a bald eagle. Most people to get to Jack's Lake leave from Klondike Park. And the best part about Klondike Park is there's a lot of wildlife. You may remember in episode one of Exploring the Naughty, when we were on the Willow, we sometimes had to get pulled or be in really shallow water. That's not the case when we're on the Naughty Rosario. And the animals here flourish as we head to Jack's. You never know what you'll see. Unlike on Willow, I've led quite a few trips to Jack's Lake solo as a guide. And Jack's Lake never disappoints. You see so many amazing things. And it's a nice easy paddle from Klondike Park. You go against the stream at first. And then as you get a little bit more tired, you float with the river back. Sometimes it's really busy. But the reason it's busiest is that there's an event called Rocking the River. But we'll talk more about that in episode 3. Some people love Jack's Lake for the fish. I love to kayak. I do prefer kayaking over canoeing. What about you? Are you guys having fun? Yeah. Is this your first time? Yes. Yeah. Oh, nice. Enjoy. Thanks. Thank you. Although wildlife is not guaranteed, one thing that you're almost certain of seeing in Jack's Lake is the bald eagle's nest. Although some people, if they've never seen it before, they have a problem seeing it depending on the season. But this nest is about six foot by eight foot. And honestly, it does hide pretty well. And you can kayak or you can canoe along this river and it's pretty easy. The amount of birds that you will see as you float down the shores is awesome. But make sure that you look in the water because you might find a turtle, an otter, and so much more. What birds do you think that you can see? What animals? Yeah, if you get really lucky, you might get an encounter with a bald eagle. Here you can see this immature bald eagle that was sitting on this log in the middle of the water. And then it flew off into the distance. And as I went to go and look for it, I found an animal that I normally only see in the fields. Do you have any clue what animal this is? It was that animal at the beginning. And it was just sitting there while this bald eagle was watching. And now I'm really confused as to what I'm supposed to do. Do you watch this awesome bald eagle or the sandhill cranes? Well, I chose the bald eagle. What an experience this was watching the wind blows through its wings and then a quick little poop and I thought it was about to fly but it just sat there for a little bit longer as a beaver floated by. Beavers and muskrats often get confused but there's a huge size difference and the size of their tails. On a warm day you can see many turtles sunning themselves and that's that same log the bald eagle was on. That thing seems to be in a hotbed for wildlife. And then you've got those mallards that are awesome. And in the springtime, this river is loaded with baby birds. And you do have to make sure that you give them space or else mama bird will come after you. Oh. But look at these guys. There's so many different species of birds here that I don't even know them all. If you can help me by identifying them, that would be greatly appreciated. 
I've only ever seen one of these birds that are about to land on the tree in Canada. And so as I got closer to them, I noticed more baby birds. And then the baby birds showed me the sandhill cranes. And then the sandhill cranes were there. Seeing a group of black crowned night herons, that was definitely a highlight animal to see. A lot of the birds here are migratory birds. And that's what makes Jack Lake so awesome. You could see an Arctic tern. You could obviously see a Canada goose. Pay attention because not only will the Canada geese be flying, but you might get to see someone jumping out of a plane with Wasega skydiving. Oh, that would be a pretty cool experience to get to fly with the birds one day over the Nottawasaga. Oh. And there's so many herons and if you just sit back and relax, you'll actually get to see them fishing and feeding preening themselves, it's absolutely a magical. Except, I'm not a huge birder. I love wildlife, but birds aren't really my thing. Don't get me wrong, I appreciate them and enjoy watching them, but they don't excite me the same way that mammals and larger predator creatures do. Certain species will hang out together, and hey, there's that log again. These are cormorants. The interesting thing about cormorants is their poop is very acidic and it'll actually kill vegetation around them. There are definitely those spots in the Nautilus Saga that are a little bit shallower than others. And it doesn't stop the fishermen, whether they're birds or humans. They all go after the fish and the little critters. Here you can see a sandhill crane that's changing from its spring feathers to its fall feathers and getting ready for the mating process where hundreds of them will be in the field soon. I actually once saved a sandhill crane. If you are quiet along the river, sometimes you'll hear noises or see movements of little creatures along the bank. Did you see that? That was a raccoon. The river is also a great place to learn how to paddleboard because it's so flat. Have you ever been paddleboarding? Is it something that you're interested in learning? Let me know. It's something that I would like to do, but I prefer sitting because I'm a little bit lazy. Here's one of the fastest people on the water that I've seen in my journeys. He just zooms by in these special kayaks. There's also those that just float and the cute little beavers that you can see along the shore. I love beavers so much. Have you ever seen a beaver? I've had some pretty cool experiences where I've actually been able to get footage of beavers underwater. One of the coolest might have been in Algonquin Park when I actually watched a beaver take down a tree and then it dropped on me. The tree actually hit my fro. There's video on my YouTube channel if you want to see that. I wish there was a warning sign. Normally if a beaver's swimming, it'll send a warning sign by slapping its tail to other beavers. Look at how big and broad that is. I know that there's at least seven beavers in this area of Klondike Park because I've seen seven of them together. Beavers don't always make a lot of noise when they go underwater. Sometimes they'll splash their tails, other times they just vanish. There are definitely certain times of the days that you're more likely to see a beaver, but it is an awesome experience getting to kayak with a beaver. Most of the time they don't really seem to care about people. They just go on about doing their beaver things and just let you enjoy them. They tend to be very busy, which is why it's referred to busy as a beaver. They always seem to be repairing their dam or fixing a lodge. The part I find most interesting about beavers is a lot of times people don't notice them as they swim by or float by because only the crown of their head is actually out of the water. 
but they do do a lot of damage to trees. That's because their teeth never stop growing. So they chew on trees to help slow down or get rid of this growth. Just the same way you sort of cut your nails. That's what a beaver uses the trees for. If not, those teeth would grow right through their brains. And in the wintertime, they'll actually come out of their dams to feed. And this one looks a little bit cold to me. I wish I could have given it a hug to warm it up. But it seemed to be pretty happy. Because wildlife is not always guaranteed, Jack's Lake is still beautiful. And if you can, go for sunrise or sunset. And you can just see the magical colors as they paint the skies for you on your return home or your venture to Jack's Lake. But make sure that you stay safe while you're on the water. Getting to see the eagle's nest is really cool. Spending time with the beavers, definitely a highlight. But my favorite, it has to be seeing the otters. So let's check that out. Oh, if I was set up on the other side, I would have seen the otter fall off this tree. But getting to see an otter is amazing. Have you ever seen one? They're absolutely beautiful. They're sea hunters, or should I say river hunters and land hunters. Here you can actually see a baby that's just caught a fish. And he's communicating with mom and dad, letting them know where he is. But let's be honest, it looks like he's more interested in that fish. A group of otters is referred to as a bevy or a romp of otters. Yeah, and there's three of them. I'm not sure if dad's there or if he's with the other one, but the success rate of this romp of otters is amazing. They ate crayfish and fish for about an hour in front of me. I hope that you've enjoyed learning about the animals of the Nautawa Saga. And if you want to learn more, feel free to click on my Going Deeper series to learn more about each of these animals. In part three of this series, we're going to travel from Klondike Park to Schooner Town. We're going to enjoy some amazing views. Seeing the sand dunes, that's spectacular. We'll learn about the flotillas and rocking the river. Don't worry, they're better than me. We'll still see a few animals, but not as many as this is where all the cottages and houses are. And then we'll learn about the newest experience on the Nautilus Saga. And we'll get lit with nighttime kayaking with Free Spirit Tours. Thank you for watching. I hope that you've enjoyed. Please like, share, and subscribe. And until next time, stay safe, have fun, and keep enjoying wildlife. If you'd like a $1 coloring package, please visit my website.